Hey guys, it's Casey. Welcome to Reviews Day Tuesday, the day where I talk about books I've recently read and liked, and hopefully recommend some books for those of you who like to read. Today's pick, The Testaments by Margaret Atwood, the long-awaited sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. Clearly, the author's name takes center stage on this cover, which is a gorgeous kind of duochromatic modern representation of that image that is so stark from the television series, which is The Handmaids with the Veil. But whenever you're going to talk about a sequel, you definitely have to talk about it in relationship to the original book that it is adding on to. One of the things that made The Handmaid's Tale so successful was its absolutely stunning literariness, uh, but also telling this really important story that I think a lot of people found not only compelling, but so dangerously close to reality that it emphasized a lot of societal problems that were already taking place. And that sort of unheimlich, this kind of uncomfortableness with the familiar, um, or that too close for comfort feeling, was something that I think was really emphasized with the original book. Oh, I'm gonna stop holding this. It's really heavy. I'm gonna start off by saying that there were a lot of things to like about this book. It was fast paced, it had a good plot, it had strong, compelling characters. It kept you turning the pages to see what would happen next. It was a page turner. I think in a lot of ways it fell short of the expectations set by the magnificence of its predecessor. The Handmaid's Tale did something very new and very innovative and very exciting. And the way that it ended was beautiful because it ended on this note of possibly hope, possibly redemption, um, but also uncertainty. And there was this lack of clarity about whether or not um, our Alfred had been saved or damned. And that was something that left the readers wanting more. And I think one of the problems with the Testaments is that it attempts to give the readers more, that thing that they were craving, but it doesn't do so in a way that's really fulfilling. In terms of style, the, the book lacks a lot of the things that made The Handmaid's Tale so unique. While it's certainly entertaining and it hits all those points, it's fast, it's fun, it answers a lot of the questions that you were left with at the end, the end of Handmaid's Tale. I think because it answers those questions, it leaves you feeling like, is that all? Is that it? Like, I wish it, there had been more and I wish it had been deeper instead of being a little bit of a, I don't wanna call it a fluff piece because it's still quite dark, but it doesn't have the same kind of urgency as The Handmaid's Tale because all of that ambiguity, all of that danger, all of that relationship to the real world fades away as we get to the end where it's clearly going to be kind of this happily ever after. And it's framed that way from the beginning because the whole point of the, the text is that it's made up of testaments that were left after the fall of Gilead. So we know right from the offset that Gilead is going to fall. That removes all of the tension, all of the ambiguity. It's more of a, how does this happen instead of a, will it happen? And I think that's a real failure of the book, actually. In terms of the plot, I found it as a writer myself and as a very avid reader to be quite predictable. I think there's supposed to be some kind of mystery at the beginning of as to who the various speakers are. Um, they're labeled just as subjects 369A and 369B or something. The sort of framework is of these being historical documents that were left over after the fall of Gilead leaves me feeling a little bit like an outside observer rather than someone who can actually believe in the text or uh, have some kind of suspension of disbelief where you know you are not not necessarily a participant but certainly an active witness to the atrocities happening so in the handmaid's tale there there was the same kind of setup sort of that that this was her story that was being left somewhere in a found object rather than a written story but there was still the kind of feeling as if you were going through it with Offred. Whereas in The Handmaid's Tale, there's definitely a discontinuity or disconnect um, between the characters and the reader, which I found quite unfulfilling, I guess. 
And that's not to say I didn't like the story. The story itself was quite interesting. It borrows a lot from the television series The Handmaid's Tale rather than the book The Handmaid's Tale, which is a little bit weird, but I mean, still kind of works because The Handmaid's Tale, the television series, the first series retells the story of the book and then from the second series onward there's new material being added as it goes past the end of where the the book left off so there are characters and situations included in the testaments that happened after the end of the handmaid's tale so it kind of builds on the continuity of the television show which is not a bad thing but certainly a strange thing and if you're reading the book having not watched the show there's definitely more of a gap and perhaps more of a mystery or ambiguity as to who some of the characters are right off the bat whereas if you've watched the show I think it's pretty clear early on who both the witnesses are in terms of their relationship to Offred, um, who is not um, a focal character in this text. Early on, the only character sort of identified by name is Aunt Lydia, who is a character both in the novel The Handmaid's Tale and a character who's important to the television series. I actually think there's a lot to like about this book, and if I had read it before reading The Handmaid's Tale or without having watched the show, I think I would have liked it for different reasons. I mean, it does kind of hit all those points on time, and there's a bit of a predictability to a lot of the twists and turns that make it perhaps slightly less compelling than the original book. E even if I hadn't read the original book, there's something a bit mechanical about this text, but I still think it would work almost better as a standalone novel than as a sequel. I think in the context of the first book and even the show, when you're comparing it, it just falls so much farther than if it had been left to stand on its own. And I think that's a real shame because there's a lot to love about this book and it's quite enjoyable. But it's also a much lighter read. It doesn't have any of the same darkness or urgency of the original text. I can't go too much into the plot of the book without revealing a ton of spoilers. Uh, but even if I were to spoil it, I mean, there's not a whole lot to spoil. I, at least I think the plot points were fairly predictable. I don't know. I think Aunt Lydia's point of view is the most compelling for sure. Um, her description of how she became an aunt, how Gilead was constructed, and her role in both the falling of the empire, I guess, and the construction of it is quite interesting. And her character is certainly the, the most fully faceted of the characters involved. The other characters, and I'm saying this knowing full well that I mean, it was kind of the point for them to be a little bit milk toast. Um, the other characters do not have the same kind of compelling reasons to do the things they do and sometimes it comes across as a little bit shoehorning um, a flat character into a specific role rather than allowing for a dynamic character to make active decisions. There was a lot of other people telling the girls what to do and them doing it kind of blindly or um, not fully understanding what was happening or not understanding the implications or when they did it was just like yes I was scared but I knew it I had to do and it's like you're a 16 year old girl what why are you who has only just learned why she's important like it doesn't make sense for her to make some of the decisions she makes I did however really enjoy the kind of coda final chapter and I don't think it's spoiler to you to talk about it because it's just it's so great, it's perfect. The final chapter is a transcript of a historian's keynote address at an academic conference at some vague point in the future. Um, and I, as an academic myself, I found it to be quite funny and very on the nose and very uh, indicative of what happens at an academic conference. So you have kind of all these academics debating what actually happened and the validity of the, of the testaments and, you know, where were these fragments found? What do they represent? How can we use these to talk about the fall of Gilead? And some of the kind of in-jokes are very much the thing that as an academic, I'm like, yep, that, that's what a conference about this would look like. Um, it sort of reminded me of, for example, a conference about 
World War II war atrocities where people would just kind of be blandly talking about all these things that happened, but also making jokes that at some points may kind of only appeal to academics. Um, and at some points kind of makes fun of this idea that at some point in the future there will be a bunch of stuffy people sitting around a table uh, talking about, you know, the fall of this regime and sometimes misinterpreting evidence and saying, you know, we don't really know who this person was or, um, you know, it's having less information even than the reader. So the reader who um, has definitely read the Testaments but maybe has also read The Handmaid's Tale or seen the television show can go, actually, I know what that means and you're doing it wrong. And it's quite entertaining to think that, you know, the active participants would interpret things much differently than academics in the future looking at it. Um, and so there's a little bit of a playfulness there. Okay, so let's bring it back up. Um, so I guess overall, The Handmaid's Tale was a better book, but the, the Testaments is not a bad book, and I certainly don't not recommend reading it. I, in fact, do recommend reading it. That was a very convoluted way of going about that. Um, I do recommend reading the Testaments as a read that's entertaining and certainly more uplifting in a lot of ways than the original book. As a sequel, it falls a little bit short, for sure. But as a book in itself, it's pretty good. I mean, it's a solid Atwood. It's not spectacular, but it's good. If you go in with the expectations that it's going to be as good as The Handmaid's Tale, you will be disappointed. If you go in with no expectations, it will probably be, I don't know, fairly solid. And if you go in with pretty low expectations that it's not going to match up to your ideas of The Handmaid's Tale, I think you'll be delightfully impressed, actually, and enjoy some of the inside details about Gilead that that would include. It's certainly very interesting and makes all the right rhetorical moves. But because it makes all the right moves at the right time and all the twists are kind of exactly what twists you would expect to happen, to me it was a tiny bit mechanical. It's been so long since I've done one of these reviews that I forget how I usually end them. But um, I hope everybody is keeping safe and well during this crazy time um, and that the reprieve of fantasy and dystopian novels can offer you some kind of break from the, at times, very scary reality that we're living in right now. That's all, folks.